So I know what you're thinking. There's part two and my glasses changed. I know it's a totally different day of recording. We can record more than one video. Saying we were at a good stopping point and I got a phone call and I like to record these once. So what we're on to is let's see how we actually did the integration here. All right, so edit source and we're looking at how we get went about taking these two microservice for our micro front ends, wiring up to the microservice, right? To do import markdown. Uh, as well as download Markdown. So I can import Markdown, go to my home and search for it on MD file. Uh, there we go, default.md. And there we go, there's some content that got thrown in there. All right, so imported that markdown in context. Uh, and you see, I have like, you know, typography, whatever it is. It was just a silly, silly file I imported. So um, now what happened there is it hit our endpoint. So let's see what's actually behind our endpoints um, and then what the integration looks like. So if we, going back, we recall this is what DuckDuckGo looked like, right? We had our standard handlers for uh, pulling in information in the request. And then we just search and we send it back in the response. Not a big deal. Now I use these to pattern the other ones. So HTML DMD is copy and paste that file and rename it. And we're a large portion of the way there. So um, you can see I've pulled in turndown in this case, which I've used before uh, to take HTML and convert it to markdown, which let's uh, witness that working. So uh, and so we'll go to like the roadmap page, edit source, and we will download Markdown. Let's actually right click and inspect so we can witness that happen as well. All right, we got that pulled up, and I will say download Markdown. We see it goes HTML to MD. It sends this as the payload, and then in response, we get back a whole bunch of Markdown. In this case, it just Download it as a file. And there you can see there's that uh, as markdown, even with the uh, the images in place, which yes, it didn't download the images uh, in, in that context. So with that getting called, right? When I set that up, the HTML, right? We just did a very basic, hey, let's make sure we have a body and that we have the HTML parameter. We do, awesome. See if we're saying, uh, being told to do it as a link. Uh, which we support links in the other, that other little example, I'm not doing it in this case. Um, and then it's one line here, right? So issue our standard response against the response object, await turn down service dot turn down, and then send the HTML. In this case, it's caching for 180 seconds. So it's at least, you know, if you hammer the button or whatever. Uh, so it's gonna get you the response. Very simple. Now let's go the reverse, mark down to HTML. And in Markdown HTML, we can see it looks like the same file, um, except now we have .md as our parameter. Um, and then in the response, we're doing this MD class .render, so we're rendering using Markdown it. Um, again, NPM package that I pulled in just for that. But the primary advantage, other than edge side caching, being these are sitting out there spinning up on demand, executing this JavaScript code only when we're requesting it, right? As opposed to if this was sitting in the front end, which both of those packages are ES6 capable modules, I could load them into the front end. That would then be on the client to handle, right? So instead of pushing all of that to the client, this approach is going to be mathematically faster and it's better for the environment or, you know, uh, takes less time to get the resources to you, et cetera. Uh, as a result of this approach. So you can see the end to end. Now, how do we wire that in, right? So that this was more practical, right? In the previous examples, I'm showing like this, it's a standalone element. It's not super practical. Um, well, I did want to show the link part. So I could say, hey, take this file, which is Markdown, treat it as a link and make it HTML just to illustrate this working, right? So that remote loaded that via the fetch put it over there I can say, all right, don't do that. Send it back onto this side, right? Again, just completing that part of the loop with a, with the link rendering. Um, so how did we make this work more practically than that example? So the element in question here, because we do web component 
all the way down in hacks. Literally every aspect of it is a web component. Is we can see this is in the hacks tray, and this portion is called hacks view source. All right, so we have a tag called hacks view source. And so looking at hacks hyphen view hyphen source, in there we have a call to micro front end registry dot has, and we check if the micro front end registry has um, something called core MD to HTML. Now, you might say, well, you're controlling the service, the microservices in question, and you're publishing this code base. What's an example where that wouldn't be there? Well, we distribute hacks and all of the different elements of our mono repo independent of uh, these microservices in question. So it's entirely possible that you could be deploying this and because of your own internal requirements, not be using um, this you know, publicly accessible thing, right? Maybe you by company policy don't wanna be sending that data out the door um, to a Lambda that you don't control, totally plausible. Um, so this could be disabled, right? These could be taken out of the registry when you go to actually run this in production. Um, we could also modify where this is located. We're actually talking about this internal um, at my unit at Penn State about maybe we don't wait, maybe when we're doing these demos and we're getting this stuff built rapidly, maybe we do want it to be out in Vercel. And then maybe when it's actually in our production use case, we want to use our own lambdas because we pay for those and, and have contracts for them. Haven't fully reached there. These are also not like really core services at the moment as far as like core to the application running. So for now, we're going to run them. They're always going to be there. But uh, we check in the template, which again, this is a lit, lit based template using template literals here. So it's really nice to do a ternary operator and just say, if we have a core service called MD to HTML, render a button and that button on click is going to run the function import MD via micro. Looking at that, it does a dynamic import for another project I wrote previously uh, called the file system broker. File system broker is really nice for being able to do that little selection widget uh, without really having to think about it or have like a form input where you would previously have to click like the upload or find file in a form. Then you can just do that via invoking an API. Uh, so we've wrapped on top of that, this file broker so that I can say, hey, uh, request availability of the broker that makes sure it exists, then get the contents from asking the broker to pick a file that is legitimate uh, selection for having Markdown. And so that's how, when I was going through that list and I was having trouble finding stuff, it showed me just that Markdown files uh, as valid for selection. So that's what this piece is providing, is just that selection box to give me what the appropriate file in question is. So what's coming back in this contents is going to be a file object as if I've submitted a form uh, and had like an upload field. Uh, it's pretty cool the way that you can, can leverage that. This is also using, I've mentioned previously that we support promises as returned by this and you don't have to have a callback function, right? So I'm gonna send up to the MD to HTML endpoint, my contents of whatever that file that was selected. And that's going to, then we're gonna await that and the response is coming back to us, right? So that's gonna go off, make its call. And then when the data comes back, response is populated. We're gonna make sure we had a valid 200 response. Never wanna assume the web service is there. And then because it was, we run this internal method um, that says insert the contents from a file and it just basically dumps whatever the, the response contents were into there. Uh, you can see we have other ones in here for like import docx via micro, but let's find the uh, download, right? Because we go the other direction as well. And the download is gonna actually, let's do search for md to html. All right, and so for the MD to HTML button, right, the reverse um, of taking this this content and doing it that way, um, right? We have, I'm sorry, I wanted the HTML to MD. That's literally what I just had there. So there, we go. there we go. Okay, so you can see both of these they operate the exact same way, whether we're downloading it or we're uploading it um, through file selection. So the download one, right? Download via micro, the button is clicked. We check that we had it, or I call this, take the content of the body, in this case of hacks, the editor, ship it up to the endpoint, await the response. If we had data, and this is a fun, fun little trick if you haven't seen this previously um, uh, done before, 
But so this is a fun little trick to trick the browser into thinking you clicked on a link that had a, a data a data blob in it so that it downloads. Um, so we create a an a tag or to make a link. Then the href we make a object URL. We take the contents of what came down the wire and turn it into base64. And then we turn it from base64 into a blob. And then we turn that blob into an object uh, URL. So like big old data string. Then we name it download page contents.md. We say it's going to be in a blank window. We append it to the page and then we simulate a click on it. And then we remove the item in question and you get the nice little like, hey, you just downloaded it. In case you were ever wondering how that works. So that is how we do the end to end on both those services, right? We started with the what is this use case, made it in an impractical, just standalone space, which I think is really important. Um, we've had a lot of success using Storybook in that way to say, yeah, we're using this, this tag in context, but let's see what it looks like in a, in a safe space, a vacuum, a clean room, whatever you want to call it. And then that way we can provide a link to have people go to it. But what we always lacked was the interactivity, you know, complex interactions where we actually have to load data and manipulate it. And so now with Vercel in the, in the mix here, we can still add our single elements to the storybook, but we can now add in these Vercel endpoints to actually do some data manipulation or, you know, interactivity as far as user has to upload a file, changing formats, and we can provide just very, very MVP type of implementations initially, right? So that when we go and we have this up and go, okay, well, we're talking HTML to Markdown, you realize it will do something like this, right? And I'm able to show just that functionality prior to moving forward um, and actually integrating it into hacks. So the other aspect is we get to test the APIs before they move into the actual finished product and then having enough things to glue it into the finished product or opt into it in the case it has is trivial at that point. So the next one of these, uh, we're gonna I'm going to start going into some of the other services we have, right? I want to make a little uh, video and uh, write up a tutorial on each one of them. We do have uh, quite a few if I search for micro over here, right? Uh, we've got rendering our full site. We've got how to screenshot a URL, uh, doing some document conversion, docx, things like that, which are all pretty similar. But hopefully this keeps reinforcing just this, this pattern that I feel like um, we've kind of unearthed here where we have a simple task. We ship it off to something and then go, hey, you return the thing that I wanted. And we're using web components to make this um, portable. So I can just compose them however I want, drop them into different applications. So I hope you enjoy this series and look forward to the next episode. Maybe I'll even have my weird glasses on at that point. They're around here somewhere. There we go. I'll just wear them over top. It's fantastic.